Hey, I see you. <laughs> I see you here, and what I also see, I see here, you have a lot of knives, but I don't recognize a single one of them. Don't recognize one of them. They're all gone. Uh, last weekend at a movie theater, uh, window got bashed, my blue bag got taken. Oh, so, my God. 16 years of collection of knives, specialty knives and stuff, all gone. Everything on the table is new. So but, what, what are some of your favorites so far? Well, this is, okay, buck knife. It's a rubberized handle, and it's got the gut hook for uh, cleaning, you know, deer, elk, antelope, stuff like that. But now I've already got this knife, that sharp, clear out there like that. Okay, and then I made this knife. I went to the hawk shop and I, bunch of, I bought a bunch of knives. Okay, this happens to be a browning knife and it's good quality. It's also right on the verge of sharp like that. So I'm just gonna start a whole new family of knives. <laughs> and uh, you know, one really sad thing is, is my EJ Snyder uh, SXB oh, Skull yes. Crusher Extreme Blade right now is not replaceable unless you can find one online because they can't get the steel tops knives is the one who made that knife and you can't you can't get them because they can't get the steel so it really sucks and uh my buck 119 who was signed by uh cj buck is gone and then two 110 buck 110s and then a bunch of bench made and things like that so yes, I have all new knives, including this great big, notice there was three and there is. Whoa. One is G-O-N-E, okay? And I sell these little guys for $20 on my table and it is very real, okay? Aren't they cute? And yes, this one now is actually sharp like that. So what do I sharpen it with? Well, I sharpen it with my little sharpener and I just go along like this, flip it over, flip it over, flip it over. And I end up with a really good boxes, paper, string, tape, uh, and it has its own little uh, sheath. So I guess it would, yeah, it goes in there like that. And then you snap them shut like that, stick that in your pocket, you open it up, Pull the little guy out. Boxes, paper, string, tape. Sharp. Like that. So these are going to be fun. Wow, a whole new family. A whole new family. Look at those, the Damascus okay. stuff. I it. And I noticed you have, is that all you have left of your... Well, I have a few, but I've been doing pretty good today. Yesterday <laughs> and Friday wasn't as good. I have a Beast, Beast Blades. Those are really good. They're in here in the other room. And I sharpen them and make them cut like that, clear out there to the tip. And this, I can sharpen them by doing this, right on around like that. Sometimes I set the knives down and work on just the point like that, just the point like this. Then I just slide it out both sides, polish the blade, get rid of that wire edge. And I end up with a knife that really is woo, sharp enough. So that is Beast, B-E-A-S-T blades. Uh, Colorado company. So any of my, oh, this is kind of fun. Okay. Uh, might be Chinese, I don't know. Uh, Falcon, I think. And it is stainless, 420. But it doesn't say China. I don't know where it's made. But zoom in. Okay. But I've, I've worked on this knife now and made it cut like this. Uh, again, now, remember before, people used to actually say, I want to buy this knife or this knife or this knife, and I don't sell my demo knives, and I make them sharper, 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 and they become part of the family. So I can actually recognize instantly which knife cuts the best, which one doesn't really cut the best. And, uh, you know, the Benchmage, Kershaw's, Old Timers, stuff like that. This is actually a Kershaw, it's a really cool knife. Uh, it's probably stainless, I haven't looked it over. Uh, it is a Chinese made Kershaw. And actually Kershaw, I don't even know anymore, if maybe they're all made in China. Uh, but my knives cut like that, all the way out there. I can gently run them through the V-notch. See all the metal, okay. I can take serious metal off of the blade if I want to, and the only reason I would do that is 
if I go and I buy relatively inexpensive uh, Damascus blades and they sharpen them way too steep because it's, it's cheap and easy, get them out. Okay, if you want them sharper, you make them sharper. So I run them through the V-notch to reprofile them and the V-notch takes a serious amount of metal off of both sides, but I don't, I don't dig at it like this. I do that. See all the metal flying off? Just like that. Okay, I can reprofile a blade fast if I can do that. Now, it's not very sharp until I take that little burr off the blade and we do this. Two corners, 90 degrees. There's one, there's one. We take the 90 degree corners, put it against the blade like that, match the bevel it was ground at or just cut out like this. I'll come back this way, out that way, come back this way, out that way. I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret. Don't ever let anybody convince you that Damascus blades are worth more money because they're mega hard. They are not. And if they're just a general run-of-the-mill Damascus blade, they're actually super soft. Watch this. See how it slides? If I add a little pressure, see how it sticks and grabs? That means that blade is really soft, otherwise it would slide right down the blade. They're kind of cool looking, they're fun, they're interesting, but the blades are generally speaking never hard enough to make a good knife out of it. <laughs> this one's also kind of thick, you know? So this is a Damascus blade. Um, this is a fun knife. Okay, it's got a really good spring in it, so don't let it slam shut. I'm pinching it hard, okay? And here's the reason. About right there, inside the blade, it's like this, and then it's like that. If you let it slam shut, that point will actually knock a dent right in that blade. The fact is, maybe I'll even show you, because <laughs> I can fix it. So let's do this. Now let's see. See that nick right there? So I talked to the factory and I said, when you make these, don't make that point in there because if people don't know to hang on to it and let it go shut, it'll ding that blade every time you shut it and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And right there is the ding that I just put in the blade. That's just something to know. Uh, I don't ever let, I, I close my knives, all my knives, I actually close them, I don't let them slam shut. So we got old timers, bench maids. I did sell one of my knives this morning and it was a small knife like this. Okay. And I got about actually $20 more for it than I paid for it. He said, how much? And I said, 40. And uh, he said, okay. So I sold it to him, doubled my money. Make your knives cut like that. I'm a capitalist. I believe whatever a fair value that I determine and they determine is amicable, it's good with me. If I if I go to a, I don't know garage sale and I buy this knife for three dollars and I sell it for forty, that's okay. Why? Because in his mind the knife is worth forty dollars, so we're good. Um, and uh, it's a Kershaw. It's a really good little knife. If you guys uh, have knives, I sharpen them free. All right. Get anyway, back to work, buddy. A really good deal. Axes, hatchets, hose, shovels, any kind of a knife. Cheap knives, things like that. Kershaw's, bench maids. Serrated would be just like this. Still. Go down the, through there, set it down left, scoop it out right, set it down left, scoop it out right, set it down left, scoop it out right. Just like that. Bump, bump, bump on the points, flat on the back, around the uh, radius like this, like that, like that. Who's got a knife? I sharpen them free, and that knife is done in perhaps just one minute. This is Brad Buckner, SharpestBest.com at the Tanner Gun Show out at the Aurora County Fairgrounds. Okay, watch Tanner Gun Shows on uh, YouTube and uh, watch this one on SharpestBest.com, YouTube Sharpens Best. And, uh, you know, just check it out, subscribe, follow me around. I go to Hawaii and Mexico and a lot of places. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Uh,